taxes, keeping my books straight, running a profit and loss statement, it all gets so confusing. I used to spend more time trying to worry about my taxes and if I'm doing them right than I actually did working on my business. I needed a solution. That is when I found Core Financial. Core is a team of tax professionals that actually care about real relationships with their clients. From the moment I hired Core, I was able to trust that I would be fully taken care of. They run my books, keep me up to date with my finances, and make sure I'm taking full advantage of all the tax breaks I qualify for. Are you struggling to understand your finances? Do you need help making sure you don't make any mistakes? Look no further. Core Financial. Both Nick and I are huge fans of Core Financial, and we know you will be too. Check out howtofilmweddings.com slash core to see what they can do for you. Core Financial. Real relationships. No surprises. To complete weddingvideography.com, there you can see our three modules, one on business, one on editing, one on shooting. Shooting? Hello and welcome to the How to Film Weddings podcast. We are so, 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 so excited right now today. John, my best good buddy, my friend, do you want to tell everyone why we are so excited right now? I would love to tell everyone why we are so excited because the the day has finally arrived that we've been Today talking is the about, day. that we've been praying about, that we've been telling you about for months or a month at this point, and it is finally here. It doesn't feel real. It doesn't feel like it would ever get here. I've been saying when the course launches for so long, and ladies and gentlemen, the Complete Wedding Videography course is live right now right as now you listen to this it is live and people are downloading and starting to enjoy the content it makes us so excited to think about what this is going to do for the wedding video industry nick it's been so much fun just making this with you and texting you a thousand times a day and like building this community. And it's been Definitely. so, so rewarding to hear the thousands of you that have downloaded our free sections of the course. Tell us how much that one section has helped you. And I mean, I can't even imagine when the reviews start coming in from people that are taking this course. So I am on cloud nine. I can't believe it's here. Best day ever. Exactly. We are so excited like we have been waiting so long for this um it has just been building up and building up and building up for what seems forever to us uh so anyways we are so excited if you haven't really heard about the course the complete wedding videography course which you can pick up today february 10th when this is live and the cart's only going to be open for a week so you kind of need to hurry hurry on over there um, completeweddingvideography.com. If you haven't really heard about it, we have over 30 hours of content. John and I sat down and we shared almost everything that we know that we could think of about business, shooting, and editing. Uh, you know, we break down our consultation prices, um, you know, how we walk through our consultations and how we talk to our couples. We talk through uh, lots of theory about shooting and lots of theory about editing, but some really cool things that we included in this, some bonus material. One, John and I actually recorded phone calls that we had, initial phone calls with brides that we are just letting you listen to so maybe you can learn from some of our techniques. John John did an entire behind the scenes uh, video at a wedding. It's over two hours of content of you and you can see him as he interacts with the couples, as he interacts with the photographers, as he interacts with everyone. And then I sat down and edited myself editing a wedding video editing it. It was very meta. It was very insecty like <laughs> but it was really fun to record that process and share that. And we are so excited. Again, completeweddingvideography.com. It's over 30 hours of content. So excited about it. And because, you know, we want to let you know that we believe in this thing and we know it will be helpful. We right now, right now on this podcast, we are going to give away another free section of the course right here, 
right now. Don't worry if you're only listening to this um, on the podcast and you're not watching the video. It, it, we picked one purposefully that you could learn from uh, without seeing anything on the screen so you can just listen to it. But this is our section all about pricing and packages. So we thought we would give that to you so you can see the value that we are giving in this course. Again, that's completeweddingvideography.com. John, do you have anything to add before we jump into that free section? I'm just so very, very excited and so thankful. I, I can't believe it's here. I'm, I'm just super excited about this content and everybody getting to, to experience, you know, from beginning to end all in one place, you know, uh, the entire blueprint to run a six figure wedding video business. We know that this tool, if applied correctly to your business, to your shooting, to your editing will increase your business exponentially. Absolutely. And so, Absolutely. man, it is, you know, just, it sounds like a broken record, but I'm just so very excited, not just for, you know, us that we, we did it, but like for you, the ones that are listening that make this possible. So thank you so, so much. Yes. Thank you all. We are so excited again. We that's that's what we just keep coming back to because we are so excited. <laughs> Anyways, let's go ahead and jump over into this free section of the complete wedding videography course. This is about pricing and packaging. Let's go. So in this section, we are going to talk about pricing yourself, pricing packages, what to include, maybe what not to include, uh, whatever, you know, whenever you're first starting out in this business, you literally include everything. I think <laughs> my my very first package and I. I had never done this before, right? It was a two minute film, a 10 minute film, okay. full ceremony, full toasts, full dances. Like, I, I'm sure there are some people that give more, but like that I was- to say what was in mind. Yeah, I, I want to hear My first film in 07, 07 was okay. the rehearsal, the rehearsal dinner. I went to the bachelor and bachelorette parties. They were a clean couple, so we just went to dinner and stuff, but I filmed all that. I filmed for 15 hours on the wedding day. I provided a 45 minute film. I provided an MTV crib style, the groom walking through the mansion that they were getting married. And you're really dating yourself. I had like selective color in there. I had so many different things and it took forever for 500 bucks. Oh yeah. Yeah. I think, I think my first package was around a thousand, something like that. Oh, it was, I think it was, it was either 10 or 12 hours. Yeah. You know, so, and now I look back on that and I'm like, what was I thinking? So we're going to help because yeah. when you start, it's like, where do you even go? How do you build a package? What, what should you include? So yes, we're going to help you. How the industry currently is the highlight film is kind of king you would say, yeah. right? I mean, that's whenever people now want a wedding video, like that's what they want is the cinematic, whatever it may be, you know, four to 10 minutes, depending, you know, highlight video of the day, that is what they're looking for. And so a few things to help establish and figure out what maybe you should price, let's say five minutes. That's, that's probably a good starting number, about a five minute highlight film. A few things that you can need to consider. One, how long have you been doing this? Have you shot nothing? Do you have 10 weddings under your belt? Do you have 20 weddings under your belt? You know, where are you? How long have you been doing it? The other thing that you need to consider is your location and your market. If you live in a big city, you are probably going to be able to charge a little bit more than if you live out in the country, um, you know, really a rural kind of place. Another thing to consider when building packages is the ceremony edit, the toast edit, like those kind of doc edits and whether or not you want to include them as maybe like the base of your package or if those are going to be add-ons. Um, my Just personally, my wife and I have decided that the ceremony is something that we want all of our couples to have. So we do not charge extra an extra fee for them to get their ceremony. That is something that we have decided. I know there are a ton of people, John is one of them. There are tons of people that the ceremony coverage or a film is an additional charge, which is totally fine. I have no qualms against that. My, just my wife and I have decided that sure. we want to include the ceremony in our base package. Yeah, and for us, the way we edit, we're doing a little bit longer films. Most of ours are in the 10 to 12 minute range. We include pretty much everything that we think is great from the ceremony. So. 
they're seeing a lot of it. So it's really kind of doing some reflection on this, like, what is it that you want to be building as a, as a package? Like, what do you want to be editing? If you want to do something besides a five minute film, if you think a 20 minute film, or if you want to do longer edits or whatever it is that you want to do. But it's, I think the thing that I would say to get to is like, what do you want to be doing? Don't just do stuff because everyone else is doing it. Do things that you love doing. Some people, a three to five minute edit is their jam. Mm -hmm. I would hate to do that. I just don't feel like I can tell the story that I want to tell. So mm -hmm. do some soul searching, kind of figure out the things that you want to do. And that's kind of the first step in building those packages. In our experience, when it comes to packages, another question that gets asked a lot, okay, do I do the package system or the a la carte system? In our experience, the a la carte system, which is, you know, you have one thing and people can add on what they want. Um, usually that is a more higher end clientele. Mm -hmm. It works better for them. If you are just starting out, I would highly, highly recommend a package system, maybe three packages or four, you know, something like that, where clients can select um, what they want rather than a, okay, you get film and hours and then you can add on all of this stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, when it comes down to it, when you're just getting going, you're going to be servicing the the low to mid to maybe high mid range couples. You don't usually just start your business and start with luxury weddings. You're dealing with people that might have, you know, a smaller budget, medium sized budget. And so you want to be able to have something that's easy for them to understand and gives them options. And so when you're building out like the package system, I did whenever I first got going, I kind of had like a small option that included some basic things. This was after, of course, I, I peeled a bunch of stuff and did everything wrong. But if I were starting today, I guess, I would have a small option that includes the basics, a, sh a short film, and then something that's a little bit more is a middle package, which I'd be trying to point people towards. And then like a, if they want to spend a ton, they can spend this. So going off of John's idea about kind of having a low and a middle and a high um, package system, which is what we still use in our business today, um, we're going to walk you through maybe some ideas if you just need some help and you're not sure what you should do. So we're going to start with, we're just going to throw some easy round numbers out there for you to track. Obviously, if you want to kind of take this system, you can adjust them how you would like. But we're going to start with a $2,000 base package. Okay, and in this $2,000 base package, we want to include a five-minute highlight. I'm going to throw in the ceremony film okay. and then hours of coverage. And for a base at like 2000, um, I would put that base hours of coverage at something like six, mm -hmm. maybe seven. So it's, in, in my experience, eight hours is like that sweet spot of this. You can, you can get a whole wedding day in eight hours, mm -hmm. okay? So make that base one just a little bit less so that the client will maybe bump up to your middle package. Mm -hmm. The a great thought when it comes to the base package is have it be a price that can get the clients in the door that they'll talk to you. But whenever they really dig around and look at that package, they realize that this is not what I want. I need to spend more money. So for a middle package, I'll keep that same five minute highlight. I'll keep the ceremony, but then I will also throw in the toasts and I will bump it up to eight hours instead of six. So now they are getting the toasts, which I think a lot of couples today would prefer to have their toasts over their ceremony. Oh yeah. And you get two more hours of coverage. And we're making this a thousand dollar jump in price. Right. I know, I know I said don't do a la carte system if you're just starting out, but this is where you can have an a la carte pricing to make people see the value that they would be getting if they added it up themselves. So if you put your hourly rate at, let's say, 350, so then to get those two extra hours, now you go from 2000 to 2700, mm -hmm. and then you put your toast film at 500, and they do that math, then they realize that, okay, if I do this a la carte, that's 3200, when I could save myself $200 by getting that middle package. Like that's, so the pull, so the pull through from package one to package two is you're adding the toast and you're adding more hours. For package three, um, go up another thousand dollars. So we're gonna say this one's four, 
4,000. I would go from a five minute film, maybe bump that up to an eight minute film, ceremony, toasts, go up to at least 10 hours. Um, you know, in this one, you can include, say, drone coverage is included in this or like an Instagram teaser or, you know, something like that that you can assign monetary value to so that so that it makes it very desirable and very worthwhile. So then you have a $2,000, a $3,000 and a $4,000 package. And again, list your pricing as all the cart stuff down below so they know that if they were to try to get all these things separate, that it would they would end up spending more money by doing it that way rather than picking one of your packages. And I will add to this, whenever I was doing this, you know, a lot of people try to have these packages, but then they try to include all these details when they're sending this information to mm -hmm. a couple. So let's assume we've built this $2,000, $3,000, and $4,000 package. You're going to want to line it up where they're in columns, where the small column is $2,000, the medium is three, and the large is the, the, the 4,000. And you can kind of see like everything included in package one is also included in package two plus things. And then everything in package three is everything from package two plus a lot of things. And then next to it or under it, you can have this like a la carte so they can start doing math in their head and be like, oh, if I do all this together now, and, and in that way they can really see that value that you bring. There's a ton of value in having that, that low hanging fruit where they can get in the door, you can kind of pull them through towards the middle or even the high package, and it really will get your business kind of just rolling. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that wedding from a month ago? <laughs> yeah, like that one that you needed to start editing yesterday? but you also need to prep today for your wedding tomorrow and you're leaving for your first vacation in forever on Monday. So what do you do? It seems that the only creative part of your edits are the excuses you're going to have to give your clients. We have the solution, Weditor. Weditor is a team of top wedding editors, project managers, and account coordinators that help us wedding filmmakers edit. They match the right editors with your style so you can spend your time where it matters most, on your business. Nick and I both use Weditor and we don't know how we would run our companies without them. It takes a team to build an amazing business and you shouldn't try to do it all on your own. Head over to howtofilmweddings.com slash Weditor to help you free up your time so that you can focus on growing your brand. Be sure to use promo code HTFW for $50 off your first project. Weditor, more than freelance, more than outsourcing. We know the time suck that is searching for the perfect song for your wedding film. Musicbed has spent years collaborating with artists, bands, and composers to make it easier than ever for anyone to find the right song for their video. With amazing artists like Chapters, Tony Anderson, and The Light, The Heat, Musicbed is the best place for wedding videographers to get licensed music. Their subscription service was a life changer for me, especially since all of their subscription music is pre-cleared for every social media platform Facebook, Instagram, Love Stories TV, and my personal favorite, YouTube, all pre-cleared. And if you are interested in a free month of a Musicbed wedding subscription, head over to howtofilmweddings.com slash musicbed. When you sign up, use the promo code HTFW and you will get your first month for free. When it comes to the package system, the biggest problem that I see is including too much or if you have package like one, two, and three, they're priced too close together. So we had these spaced out, package one is 2,000, two is 3,000, three is 4,000, but I've seen it maybe something similar, but it's like 2,000, 2,200, 2,400. Right. And if it's like that, people are automatically going to book that the highest package because it's a $400 difference, okay? If, when it comes to booking your package, if you are booking your base package the most, you are including too much. If you are booking your highest package the most, it is not priced high enough, mm -hmm. and you're probably including too much, mm -hmm. okay? So those are just some guidelines when it comes to, you should really try to have your middle package be the one that gets booked the most. Yeah, and whenever I was doing packages, my the I think I added a fourth that was just kind of my, it's ridiculous, and if you wanna get it, you can, and that's where I added that rehearsal dinner coverage, Drones didn't exist then, but like I would have added all that where it was like, you know, two, three, four, and 6,500 or something that's just like, because every now and then someone comes in, they love your stuff and they're like, I just want to book the biggest package. And whenever I would book that biggest package, I would raise the price of it. Just so I always had like this, this way to kind of gauge, like if I always want to have something that people can spend 
more money than I think that they would, but it's there in case they want it. So that way you get that expensive one out there. Package number two doesn't look so expensive anymore. So you can kind of work with them when you're doing your consultations and walk them through all the way. And then, oh, that $3,000 package doesn't seem that expensive when I came in thinking I wanted to spend two. Three seems kind of cheap now compared to the 6,000 one over here. So there's a lot of psychology that goes into it. Obviously we're not trying to do anything except for serve the clients. And I would say on that base package, you want to make sure that's something that you would want to do if someone booked it. You don't want it just to be something that's obviously, you know, nothing and you, you'd never want to book it and you're mad if you book it. You want that to be something that you'd be happy to do a few times a year and hopefully you don't do it so many times. Another question that we get a lot is, when should we raise our prices? When should I raise my price? How do I know that? If you go in forums on Facebook or the internet or whatever, you just get a lot of, oh, you need to raise your prices, you need to do this. So we wanna talk through a few different ideas when it comes to that. One, you need to know and understand your market. Say okay. it again. You need to know and understand your market. Okay, that's not saying that you can't be really expensive and be the most expensive in your market, but Depending on where you live, your market does have a cap, okay? It does have a cap. So you just need to know what that is. Um, you can flirt with it and try to push that a little bit more and maybe raise the bar, but you need to know that if you live in a pretty small town, you're probably not gonna be able to charge $7,000 for a wedding. Like it's just, probably not feasible. Definitely not as easy. Definitely yeah. not as easy. So you just need to know your market. And I'll add on that, you need to also know your numbers. So if you know that you wanna make $100,000 next year, you wanna make a, have a six figure business and you're charging $2,000 a wedding film, you know that you need to shoot 50 weddings. That's so a lot. that's a lot. You know, if you're shooting at 3,000, you know, you have to shoot 33.3 weddings or whatever. And so knowing your numbers, mm -hmm. if you know that to make a living, to quit my day job, to be able to feed my family, I need to make $40,000 or euros or whatever it is, I need this number to break even and to win in, mm -hmm. in, in my business. Once you hit that number, that gives you some freedom. Mm -hmm. And so if I know, hey, I've got $50,000 booked and that pays my bills for the year, I've got 18 weddings booked or whatever, I can now raise my prices confidently, three, four, five hundred dollars maybe, and just see if people keep booking. And that's a good time to take that risk mm -hmm. as opposed to just being like, well, I'm tired of making $2,000. I haven't gotten any better. I don't have any bookings. I'm gonna raise them to $3,000. Like you wanna be strategic in this. Mm -hmm. You know, you wanna get that boat close enough to the dock so you don't get wet. You right. want to have your numbers figured out so that way when you do make these changes of nobody's booking, you can always kinda, you know, lower them back if you need to. And what I've found over the years, I've been raising my prices three or $400, two to three times a year for the last 10 years. And so, that in itself, you know, I've hit a certain number of bookings. Okay, I've raised it four or $500, and then brides didn't blink whenever I went to book them for the next, and I just, I wanna smack myself in the head right. and say, why didn't I raise my prices sooner? But you don't wanna do that just really abruptly. You want to make that a slow- a Gradual. Yeah. Gradu gradual change is is probably the best way to do it. Yep. Um, some advice that I heard a long time ago when it came to pricing and raising your prices was every third wedding that you book, not every third wedding you shoot, every third wedding that you book, raise your price somewhere between $100 and $300, just across the board. The reason that you would do this is because you're not shooting a wedding for 12 months from now. And you'd be like, I just raised my prices $300 and I literally, I'm in a, a three month span where I haven't shot anything, mm -hmm. but that wedding is in 12 months and you already have 10 weddings on the books. So you are going to be 10 weddings better in one year when their wedding comes up. So if you, you're like paying yourself in advance a little bit by doing it that way. And you're making the market in your area better by continuing to raise your price. And if every third wedding you're raising your price, you know, $300, you know, if you're shooting 10 weddings in a year, I mean, you're almost making a thousand dollars more by the end because you've just raised your prices. Yeah. And I, th I think the thing is, is like, finding a system that works to where you, you know, the three weddings, you're raising it a little bit, like find a system that works for you that yes. you're comfortable with. But when it comes down to it, a lot of new people I see, they'll shoot 30 or 40, 50 weddings in a year 
and they don't love that. I mean, if you want to do volume, that's not what we're talking about mm -hmm. here. We're talking about like you get into this, oh, I have to book, I have to book. You, you, you know, you have to eat, you have to, and then you realize 35, 40 weddings booked in that you're like, oh my goodness, like I am screwed. Like I, I have to do all this work now and I'm better. And so future Nick would thank Nick 12 months from now for raising his prices because he is going to get better. He mm -hmm. is going to get more experience better branding, better videos. And so you don't want to have such a low price that you're booking out the next year so far in advance because you are going to get better and you're going to be really mad at yourself if you do that. A rule of thumb is if it is, um, if it is in June of one year and you are pretty much fully booked for the entire next year and you're halfway through the current year, your prices are too low. Like people are willing to pay you and maybe, and the reason that you are probably so full booked up is because your price point is pretty low for what you are offering. So that is an indicator looking at how booked up you are for the next year if you should consider raising your prices. And we say this knowing we are both full time in this. Like wedding videography is our job. So we know how scary it is to raise your prices because you are worried that, oh, no one's going to book me and now I don't get to eat or whatever it may be. So we encourage people to raise their prices, but we're not a, you just need to raise your prices blanket. There are some things that you need to consider. So I remember whenever I finally got to a price point where I couldn't afford me to be my wedding filmmaker. And I think a lot of us in the wedding industry, we can afford so much wedding film that we think that's the most we can charge. And you have to get out of your own way. You have to get out of your head. Once you've been doing this a while and you've raised the prices, I remember when I hit a $4,000 price point, I was just like, no one is going to book this. There's no way. And I, I had built the brand. I was 10 years into my business or eight years or something like that at this point and had slowly raised the prices three or $400 a year, you know, and gotten to this point and it was just like, I had this realization, the light came on. Oh my goodness, I'm not my clientele anymore. Mm. I couldn't afford, it's huge. I couldn't afford me. And it was like, but my product was good enough to be charging more than that. So you have to like, as you're growing your business and getting better, like your films should get good enough to be out, out earn you mm -hmm. <laughs> and out, you know, you can afford, like you can't afford your own films. And so getting over that mindset and saying, but I can build a business that is for people that can afford to spend four, five, six, seven, ten thousand dollars on a wedding film. If you can get through that and get over that hump and see that value that you can bring, you're going to be able to make so much more money in your business. You know, on our podcast, we have talked to several people um, in the industry, you know, well respected people, and they said if you are not raising your prices as you go, you are really hurting the industry around you and your city not be able to grow. And so um, we've all talked about, you know, the people in our markets that just will not raise their price and how it kind of stifles the people at the top because they won't continue to move the bar up. Now, I believe that there should be people at various price points, you know, all the way up the ladder. But if you've been doing this for years and you're still at the same price point that you were five years ago, like I think you're missing out on a lot of stuff because you are five years better. Yeah, and people aren't going to just say, hey, can I pay you more? Like if you're not putting that value on what you're doing, you know, when we're building out these packages and building out these prices, you have to be self-aware to realize I'm getting better, I'm doing mm -hmm. better. There are new people, if you're three years into your business, like that is a veteran in most cities. If you're three years into your business, you're a veteran. Like, yeah. basically, I mean, you know, people that have been doing this for three or more years are kind of the veterans in the industry. And so there are people coming into the industry every single year, getting a new camera and charging less than you. And if you're not raising your prices, you're not making room for them to be in the market. And by them being in your market, charging less than you, hopefully their films aren't as good as yours. And you can justify, yeah, I'm more than this person because look at the way their films look. Look at how mine look. Look at this reputation. Look at these vendors I know. Look at all these recommendations. And so it really helps if you're really being self-aware on that kind of stuff. So the other thing that we really need to look at is the a la carte system. Um, I do this currently, but I will say, you know, that we're charging over five figures for some of these weddings. Um, it's definitely not something I would recommend for somebody getting going. But what we offer is one package that includes... Um, everything that we think that a couple really needs and then everything on top of that is an add-on. Instead mm -hmm. of 
low, medium, high. I'm not trying to reach new people. I'm booked. I have a very high-end brand in town. And so I want to come across as the most expensive in town. I don't want to book a bride that isn't going to drop some major money on the wedding film because that's part of my brand. And so with the a la carte system, there's no low or medium package. It's the high package, you know, and it includes pretty much um, everything that you're going to need. And then everything else to add on would just basically be extra coverage time, um, extra edits, things like that. The package that we have honestly is the hours that were there, a feature film and a digital download of the film. Literally every single thing else that we are doing is an add on. They can add on hours. They can add on the rehearsal dinner, longer edits, the raw footage. Every single thing is an add on. Um, and it's, it's definitely one of those deals where whenever I switched over to it, um, I was nervous at first and it, I think it's just a progression. Like we moved into this new season. I had already had about 10 weddings booked for the year and I thought I'm gonna give it a try mm -hmm. and I've never looked back. And so, you know, it's hard for me to even think about going back to a package system, but I definitely don't recommend that until you've built up a great reputation and a great brand. So make sure when it comes to your packages that you are serving your clients well and you are serving them honestly through those packages. Uh, you know, the example with me and my wife, we want our couples to have our ceremony film. So we have included that in all of our packages. So that's how we believe that we are really serving them well. Um, but again, just think about what you believe that the client would want and price it in a way that makes sense, that is beneficial to you, but also beneficial to the client. And I think that you will win in the long run. How do you deliver your wedding films? Dropbox? Disc? A subscription service that is way too expensive? We have the answer for you. Wedflow. Wedflow is a cloud-based digital delivery system that we love. I personally have been using Wedflow for months and I can't get over how great of a service it is. First off, Wedflow is pay per project. That's right, you only pay for the data that you need. Webflow uses a premium viewing experience accessible on all modern devices and playback up to 4K. With custom branding and theming, wedding filmmakers can deliver an experience that's truly on brand from start to finish. Head to howtofilmweddings.com slash Webflow and upload your first project for as little as $1 per gigabyte. Webflow, a whole new take on wedding film delivery. We hope that you thoroughly enjoyed that section of the Complete Wedding Videography course on pricing and packaging. We know that if you apply that, it will help you in your business. If you'd like more information or to purchase the Complete Wedding Videography course, all you need to do is go over to completeweddingvideography.com. There you can read more information about it. We know that it will help your business. We know that a year from now, you will be thanking yourself for purchasing this right here today. It will help you grow your business, get more business, shoot the weddings you love, edit the way that you want to edit, and be in a better place in the future. Another cool thing about this, if you haven't heard, one, we are offering a 30-day money-back guarantee. You buy this, you don't like it, it's not for you, we will give you a full refund, no questions asked. Also, if you pay in full today, $1,800 for the course today, we are going to throw in a free posing for wedding videographer course that is coming out at the end of March. So if you pay in full today, you will get that whenever we release that for free. Again, head over to completeweddingvideography.com. We are so excited. Thank you for listening. And until next time, we will see you. See ya.